Hello all, I got some news articles here for you today, because if you haven't heard, Microsoft Recall is back in the news, because just like a cold you didn't want, it seems to be coming back. So I got two articles here for you today that I'm going to be going through here. First one is an Ars Technica article from a couple of months ago. So Ars Technica article, it's dated August 21st. So this has been kind of coming around for a while, so let's get into it. Microsoft will be sending a revised version of its controversial recall feature to Windows Insider PCs beginning in October. According to an update published today to the company's original blog post about the recall controversy, the company didn't elaborate further on specific changes it's making to recall beyond what it already announced in June. For those unfamiliar, recall is a Windows service that runs in the background on compatible PCs, continuously taking screenshots of users' activity, scanning those screenshots with an optical character recognition, and then saving the OCR text and the screenshots to a giant searchable database on your PC. The goal, according to Microsoft, is to help users retrace their steps and dig up information about things they had already used their PCs to find or do in the past. The problem was that other users on the same PC, hackers with physical or remote access to your PC, could easily access, view, port those screenshots in the OCR database since none of the information was encrypted at rest, at rest or protected in any substantive way. That was the original a uh, launch. People were able to get into it pretty easily. One of the major problems though, I think that this is not kind of getting into here is that people weren't just worried about attackers getting into the database. Although, yeah, that is a huge problem. People were also worried about Microsoft themselves. One of the changes that has been made since this article came out, and this is going to, in the other article we're going to go through in a minute, is that they have made it opt-in for now. We all know what uh, Microsoft's history with opt-in is. You know, it's going to be opt-in, just like online accounts in OneDrive. A little bit farther here. Among the changes Microsoft has said it will make is the, Microsoft, is the database will be encrypted at rest and will require authentication and periodic re-authentication with Windows Hello before users are allowed to access it. This feature will also be off by default, whereas the original plan was to turn it on by default and make the users go into the settings to turn it off. Okay, so it is in the article here. One of the big problems with that, although I have to admit, having it encrypted at rest is then what they were going to do. Because what they were going to do was a plain text database, which is absolutely insane. At least they're going to encrypt it, so that's something. I mean, I don't know how much that's actually going to do. I suspect people will be able to still find ways into it and find exploits. And I suspect it probably won't be that hard given Microsoft's past history. But again, at least that's a improvement. For now, I'm going to read the last paragraph of this article here. That said, security researchers and reporters who found the holes in the original version of Recall could only do them because it was possible to enable them on unsupported PCs. Just as it is possible to run a Windows 11 on PCs that don't meet the system requirements. It is possible that user will, will figure out how to get Recall and other co-pilot features running on unsupported PCs at some point too. Now this leads into question here, because who are those users going to be? I have not seen, maybe this is just because, you know, I hang out in Linux land and where I'm at, we're a little bit more skeptical about new technology. I mean, let's be real, okay? My whole modus operandi around tech is that I got scared of a VCR telling me hello when I was four years old, and I don't really know if that fear's ever left me, to be entirely honest. That's actually what's kind of driven a lot of my interest in technology throughout my life, is seeking to understand something that I'm dependent on and didn't entirely trust. So that's kind of my bias coming into this. So, but what I have not seen, if anybody that's saying that they actually want this, one of my major concern, one of my concerns or questions about a lot of this AI stuff is who's actually the ones pushing for this? Because I haven't seen a single person even have a positive response to a Microsoft recall. In fact, one of the things that prompted me in starting my YouTube channel is that when this all came out back in June, I had friends coming to me and asking me about switching to Linux and how they would do that. And that was kind of what got the ball rolling on that. I'm just not sure who the target market is. So on to the next article. The next article here is an Axios article. Wow, that is much lighter. <laughs> Completely changed the view. Privacy controversies. Yeah, you could yeah, yeah, you could say that. I need its signature recall feature. Microsoft is looking to reboot its AI PC effort with improvements and the addition of some new AI tricks and broader chip support. Why it matters. The addition of built-in AI functions could give the PC industry 
a much needed boost. It'll give Microsoft a much needed boost. Profit lines, that's true. But they're kind of, for those of you that don't understand what's going on with Microsoft and say hi, boom, boom, quote unquote, that's, I think it's a bubble. It's that Microsoft's kind of playing both sides because they did buy out OpenAI and they've been pushing a lot through that. But a big thing that a that Microsoft did, and this is a really smart thing that they did, by the way, is they went all in on the data center stuff. But they're the ones that are renting out a lot of the data center to these other AI projects. So they're kind of playing both sides. Yeah, they're kind of getting in on the gold rush a little bit, but also kind of like NVIDIA, they're the ones that are selling the shovels. So naturally, of course, it's good for them to try to hype this up so that they can essentially sell more shovels. It was a smart business move on their part, we'll give them that much. So, driving the news. Following a delay, Microsoft has revamped recall, requiring users who want to enable the future both opt-in and to use biometrics to authenticate themselves, among other changes. That's interesting, that they're going to use biometrics, because theoretically that should be more secure, but that could depend on how they implement it. I don't know a whole lot about biometric implementation, I won't comment on that any farther. Microsoft is adding new features for its co-pilot PCs, including universal click-to-do option that brings up different AI-assisted actions based on the content on the screen. Oh, oh boy. Why can I just see that being, like, flippy all over again? Congratulations, guys. We're going back to the 90s in the worst possible way. We've got Clippy back. Oh, wait, they are unironically looking at back Clippy. Oh, oh no. I'm, I'm, like, having flashbacks right here. Like, no, no, no. Because they're bringing back Clippy, but instead of, like, a 90s aesthetic, it's a uh, modern, flat, big tech art style. Which is and so, we soldier on. Catch up quick. Microsoft introduced the concept of Copilot Plus PCs in May, and it went over about 12 Rock, with a series of AI features that run locally on your machine rather than having to rely on cloud based services. Recall promised to follow and correct everything the user sees and does on the screen. That could make an AI assistant much more helpful. A raise hackles over the amount of personal data Microsoft would gain access to. That's, that's quite a lot. Now, I have a very interesting question about this recall fee. Will it, what about people that are reading stuff that is, quote unquote, misinformation? If any of you have ever delved into that sort of thing, I'm not going to get it too specific. You know that like that information can just disappear from the internet in a blink of an eye. What I'm wondering is, is Microsoft recall going to save that kind of information? I'm just saying like hypothetically, like, Let's say I was a flat earther. I'm not. I'm just talking hypothetically here. And I was like following some flat earth blog that got taken down for misinformation. Would a uh, Microsoft recall store the screenshots from that blog? Or will there be something in the AI that will actually go through it and look at it and be like, no, this is misinformation. You can't look at this. Because I have a feeling that's something they're going to try to do. And that is a potentially really something with actually a lot of really, really scary potential go on here. The big picture. Former Inflection CEO, Mustafa Suleiman, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, who was tapped in March to head Microsoft's consumer AI effort, released a memo describing AI companion for everyone that he aims to build. I truly believe we can create a calmer, more helpful, and supportive era of technology, quite unlike anything we've ever seen before. He wrote, laying out everything in his vision for the first time since joining Microsoft, while noting it'll take years of fully developed technology been pledged that Microsoft's co-pilot bus will grow and understand more context and remember the most helpful details from your life while also safeguarding privacy, data, and security. Over time, it will adapt to your mannerisms and develop capabilities built around your preferences and needs, humans, and it will eventually be able to act on users' behalf. We are not creating a static tool so much as establishing a dynamic and emergent and evolving interaction. Effort is more comprehensive than the piece of anal features like so far for Copilot Plus, reminiscent of Apple. Do you really want to know what that makes me want to do? That makes me want to set the PC on fire, frankly. The idea that this thing is going to learn and adapt to my mannerisms is just creepy on a whole new level. It kind of really makes me want to kill it with fire, frankly. But according to Axios, what we have between the lines here is challenges for Microsoft are familiar. It is a huge company separated into a host of product teams, and it has to work with several chip suppliers and PC partners, complicating efforts to deliver a unified and complete. Microsoft is also trying to seamlessly blend homegrown AI technologies from those with those from partner OpenAI. As part of its announcements on Tuesday, Microsoft said it is testing a Think Deeper feature that gives Copilot the ability to reason through more complex problems by using the latest reasoning models. 
I haven't delved too much into 01, but that's another like that's another thing that kind of creeps me out. So not only is this thing going to be on my computer, going to be opt-in, quote unquote, because we all know how Microsoft is about opt-in. It's going to record every move that I make on my computer and begin to learn and adapt my mannerisms. Yeah, that's a hard no for me, Chief. That's a more like, I'm going to kill the PC with fire if it does that to me. Yeah, I'll go full caveman, not, frankly. And that's not even getting into like, that's just going by my knee-jerk response where my heart says kill it with fire and my brain just says this is going to be a disaster on whole 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 number of levels like for example because we all know that this is what's going to happen if microsoft starts selling this data because i i kind of suspect it well there's lots of money to be made to make data why wouldn't they well that could be a lot of problems also What's going to happen when they make this opt-in, quote-unquote, just like they did with OneDrive and online accounts? Veronica from HR, who knows nothing, who knows nothing about computers, but works in HR at Citibank, has her computer hacked because of something stupid. And they get this whole database of everything that's been on her computer. That's because, like, yeah, it's encrypted, but how good is that encryption? If it's working through Windows Hello and stuff like that, I have, I think there's reason to be skeptical given Microsoft's track record security. Now, they're much better than they used to be, but I think, if you want to know what I honestly think about me, I think now is a great time to get away from all this creepy stuff. All this, like, a million eyes peering in on you, staring at you constantly, like a weird kid staring at the back of your neck as you try to eat lunch. And I got a little weirdly. Anyway, I got a little weirdly. And instead, you can switch to Linux. You know what? There's none of this AI stuff. Literally, I, the closest I can think of is a little bit of a, is that they were supposedly implementing a little bit of AI stuff in KDE Server. Nothing like this. Literally, just a search sorting algorithm. Linux has a much, much better has a much, much better record of respecting your privacy and isn't going to sell your data or have a creepy AI trying to learn and train off you. That's another question too. Like, if this thing learns and trains off. Are they going to aggregate everyone's data into one big data set and then use that for training? Like, are they going to aggregate people's behaviors and then use that as a training set so that they can come out with Microsoft Copilot 2 that's even more personal? I mean, they probably won't do that right away, but that's a genuine question for the future about where this is going. Again, besides all the cons all the security concerns, like I've mentioned, there's still lots of those. And frankly, like, it's not even, in my case, it's not even hackers I'm concerned about. It's, I'm much more afraid of, I'm much more fearful and worried about companies like Microsoft and Google than I am about some random hacker. And my reasoning for that is because, yeah, some random hacker can like really screw up your credit score and stuff like that, and they can do bad things. I'm not going to downplay that, but they don't have the sort of societal wide power. Corporations like Google or Microsoft or Apple, which have tens of the probably collectively tens of thousands of employees and billions and billions of dollars in capital. I hope that this is a great prompt for you guys to switch to Linux. If you can look through my channel and you can see lots of guides on new users to Linux, for new users to Linux and stuff like that, Linux is in such a state now that it's never been easier to get into than it is right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and pray every day.